Hi all, I have a game totally hot off the press. So uh, this is Leela Zero against Tucano 7.05. So this is in round 17. The set book moves are given e4, e6, d4, d5. So four ply to four moves from both sides. And this is the end of the book. <laughs> Leela chooses the exchange French. Interesting choice. E takes d5. E takes d5. Knight f3. Knight f6. Bishop d3. Bishop d6. And now this check. And black. Maybe you could say thankfully doesn't play queen e7. I just don't see how white would with best play get any advantage from this symmetrical pawn structure. But black it seems Tukano is seemingly wanting to create imbalances, which might be a bad idea here with bishop e6. So Lila goes for the light square bishop. After queen d7, knight takes. Again, here it seems uh, Tukano is pretty ambitious to keep the queens on uh, with f takes. Maybe queen takes is a little bit safer. For example, this position, uh, it's pretty dry and a symmetrical pawn structure. But anyway, f takes is played, and I think white has an edge here now by grabbing that light square bishop, and we've got an imbalanced pawn structure. So black seems to be doing all the legwork to make the game exciting, but giving white some pretty big trump cards now. Rook e8, white castles. And there's a possibility even of c4 uh, at some point. This is locked down here, queen c6. Uh, knight c6 is an alternative hitting d4 as well, by the way. Now this position here, it's possible that white could consider f4 with a bind or a small edge. Okay, so uh, we have queen c6, bishop e3, and now e5 here. Leela's not too worried. C3. It shouldn't be uh, a good. It wouldn't be a good idea to take here. I think Black activates quite well in this position with the dark square bishop, and White doesn't want to have structural damage like this. That'd be a small edge for Black. So uh, yeah, we have uh, C3, Queen A6, Queen D1, Knight C6, A3. King G8, and now a neat little plan G3 to put the bishop on G2. Try and put some pre pressure on D5. King H8, rookie one. E takes, which does give white the C3 square now for the knight. Queen B6. Knight C3, setting a little trap. If black takes on B2, then the queen is literally trapped, actually, after Queen B5. Bishop F1, and then Bishop D2 seals the trap. Queen is trapped, black would have to give up a piece. It's not very nice just to lose a piece here. Uh, big advantage to white. Uh, so knight a5 is played. b4, not really concerned about any a5. Is this reckless on Leela's part? Bishop g5. Now this is actually quite interesting, very interesting at a different level for me. Uh, because there seems to be reckless play on the queen side as if black might have time to exploit the structure here with a5. But on the other hand, the prospect of dicing black's pawns leaves h7 weak in some variations here now. And uh, we have actually the move uh, rook takes e1 for the moment, queen takes. And now c6, you might think, well, hold on, queen takes d4. Possibly uh, the bet, one of the better moves is rook d1. This position is going to be comfortable for white. Here, this is a comfortable position with the bishop pair and pressure on the c file. Um, but yeah, okay, so black played c6. But now we do get this fracturing of the pawn structure. And as I say, when Leela, you'll notice that in a lot of Leela games, if she's voluntarily giving up the bishop, for a knight, quite often there's really massive, unpredictable light square pressure or play soon after. Is that the case here? Well, queen d1 defends now d4, and the queen's got access to h5. And you can imagine with bishop f5, the h7 pawn is not very uh, uh, secure. Now, this operation here on the on the queen side, 
because of this construct queen h5 bishop f5 Lila just plays casually knight a4 and you might think hold on there's a rook uh, there's a lot of pressure on b4 is all this worth nothing the queen actually steps meekly back here because on queen b5 guess what Lila can play here on light squares if I give you five seconds to pause the video white to play here Okay, Queen H5 is possible for Bishop F5. The Queen will be in Siberia over here on Queen takes A4. Bishop F5. This is this is just mating basically. Bishop G6 threatening mate. Queen's in Siberia. That would be desperate to defend F7. And after that, you know, this is just <laughs> end of game. So it seems that because of the light square weaknesses, Black can't really be too cheeky over here. So the queen just just goes back uh, on queen a6 again. It's a little bit away from a7. It's dangerous, you know. Something like knight c5 as well is is possible. It's, it seems, uh, and this is just this this kind of position is just winning for white with the rook infiltration. That'd be really desperate. So it's really dangerous situation here. So the queen steps back. Knight c5 anyway now. Queen g7. We have bishop f5 locking down things. And the bishop can come to this diagonal now to keep an eye on h7. Queen g5. You might think, well, hold on. A takes. Does this do anything? This line, if the queen's infiltrating over here, it could be useful to transition to an end game, a favorable end game at the very minimum. For example, like this, there's a potential end game prospect which is desirable, but is opposite color bishops. Uh, it's interesting, but uh, Black again, maybe thankfully, you know, he's keeping some fun in the game. It seems Black's doing a lot of legwork to keep this game extremely interesting uh, at points. Bishop c2, Queen g7. Uh, you have here King g2, b6. Now Knight e6, Queen f7, Bishop f5, b b5, which. Actually leaves this pawn a bit weak on a back, you know, back with pawn on the C file potentially, and Lila perhaps tries to expose Black on the queen side now by taking, quick, you know, light square play on the queen side. There's an orchestration on both sides of the board here. We have B4. You might think Knight B2. Well, here if Queen D2, perhaps Knight C4 hitting the queen defending the rook, but White just plays Queen. E2 hitting the knight in this position. This didn't happen. And in this case, say knight takes a4. Rook c1 is, is a powerful move. I've discovered this position with the backward pawn. There's always knight d8 after and knight takes, and black's getting dismantled. Look at the number of isolated pawns. This is a feature of Leela games. Well, especially if a human is playing Leela, the pawns just get totally diced. Uh, through the dicer here, uh, so this is a big advantage to White, just structurally. Uh, so let's have a look here at these variations. So this is interesting to me that this Knight B2 is is met with Queen uh, E2. Um, so yeah, so we've seen this, and what if like Rook takes? Then there's just queen takes b2 protecting the rook. That's winning a piece. Thanks very much. Um, also, I think there was uh, an interesting variation. Sorry, I just want to show you uh, here. Uh, knight d8 immediately is uh, not so effectual, I believe. Uh, I mean, it's 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 still pleasant. It's still pleasant. It's just not so effectual. So uh, knight d8. Queen e8. Okay. Um, we have here now uh, the knight attacked. So on queen e7, yeah, I mean, this is just a fork of rook and queen. Uh, so queen e8, knight b7, forks the rook and bishop instead. So rook a7, knight takes. Knight takes this simplification here is very interesting. We've got isolated, isolated, backward pawn, 
light square bishop without counterpart white stronger than light squares outside past pawn uh, if we take stock here black has a certain amount of pressure white's got to keep an eye on things like queen e4 check that bishop does a good job defensively here as well uh, knight c4 is played uh, white has a very comfortable position and this looks like an attempt for a form pawn h5 h6 <laughs> thorn so in the midst of everything now the form pawn being installed another worry for black uh, we have now knight a5 rook b1 queen f8 uh, here on b3 to try and deflect away uh, the bishop this is mostly harmless for white white's got a big edge there it's not really worth considering so queen f8 but this b pawn is a target now queen e1 nifty little move hitting b4 black defense and now h5 is oh yeah there's a real interest in the form pawn <laughs> um you might think in this position b3 by the way instead sorry after rook b7 h5 here black played rook b8 now here you might be thinking well the knight and rook coordinate for b3 in fact this is cute white could take on a5 and take on b7 allowing a queen here because queen c7 threatens mate the queen's on a dark square there's no immediate checks for the white king and here rook b8 would just win the queen at least back with, with an advantage actually it's uh the black pawns are not as safe as the white pawns in that end game scenario so interesting uh rook b8 was played um yeah on uh knight c4 bishop d3 this b pawn is like very vulnerable here on c5 we can see the wrath of the four form pawn with h6 for example taking and there's all of a sudden here the massive rook h1 showing how vulnerable this h7 pawn is uh, this is absolutely like winning so you can see some dangers lurking on on a semi and h file that that dem demonstrates that waken wakes us up to the possibility of a semi um, h5 with the king on g2 here ready for rook h1 so rook b8 we see bishop d3 knight c4 now the invasory invasion <laughs> queen e6 uh this is really really black so under so much pressure now we see a desperate looking f5 that's just taken uh rook d8 yeah pawns are being shed here because rook takes b4 now tactically is destroying uh black if black takes then this is just chat mating <laughs> so another pawn bites the dust rook d6 six is played white just simplifies two pawns have just been taken yeah blacks collapse here after queen blacks collapsing after queen e6 it seems like yeah the pressure is is just too much uh to bear in this position i mean with things like h6 and queen d7 you can see how you know there's mass massive problems ahead you know bishop h7 queen c8 if the rook was defending c8 you know this construct with h6 there's never any uh queen h6 because of rook h1 so if black did try and defend yeah i mean this looks just like a really powerful position you know black's on the brink of just total overload here as well as the b pawn being a liability as well to rook b4 so black's just yeah shedding pawns now basically two pawns have just been shed and Leela's simplifying now with queen c8 so outside pass pawn two pawns up this is just technique now really this position uh real damage has been done uh so rook f6 more pressure on c6 now locking down things now on the king side uh going to be winning another pawn soon uh this gives up another pawn it's a pretty diabolical position uh so three pawns up and rookie six knight f5 the game ended here an example continuation say g5 uh the passports are just winning on both sides of the board here the knight is just totally overloaded trying to handle the pass pawns totally winning so a wonderful game 
but I think Leela was naughty being objective, playing the exchange French. I'm hoping she will learn some more exciting variations against the French defence. Very, very naughty of her to play that line. I know it was a win, but Black seemed to be doing the legwork to keep the game interesting, giving White major trump cards in the process. <laughs> so, uh, a naughty but nice win <laughs> in round 17, which uh, gives Leela a great lead in the tournament at this point. So, prospects are, are still looking very good uh, for being promoted to Division 3, and there could be an upgrade to Leela as part of that to make her even stronger and hopefully play more interesting variations against the Fra French defense. <laughs> okay, comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks so much.